Welcome to the When We Are Brave podcast. I am absolutely thrilled just to be here Just go for it and just go, I can do Sandra this. Pankhurst. And if you really Thank believe you in yourself, you can do it. You can achieve anything. Pleasure. Sandra has had the most remarkable book written about her. Welcome life. to the When We Are Brave podcast, a podcast sharing inspirational stories and conversations, plus tips and tricks on living your best and bravest life. I'm your host, Tiffany Johnson, author of Brave Enough Now, keynote speaker and your host of the When We Are Brave podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in to When We Are Brave. I know that together we are going to live our best and bravest life. Talk to Sandra today about what it means to her to live her best. And Welcome to the When We Are so Brave Sandra, podcast. I am absolutely thrilled um, to be here well, today with the beautiful I am Sandra Pankhurst. Thank really. you, Tiffany, for having it me. Struggles through it's life my absolute like pleasure. Else. And Sandra has I had very, the very most remarkable about book written about her life, life The I Trauma life Cleaner, One Woman's full, Extraordinary Life in Death, Decay so, and Disaster um, by Sarah Krasnerstein, which has also been a winner of the Victorian can. Premier's I'm Literary Awards for 2018, plus a variety of other woman, awards. The book's boss, written about Sandra's incredible CEO, life a as a trauma cleaner and her life growing up and as a transgender woman. Take it or leave it. It gives me so much Sounds joy to, to me. I love talk that. to Sandra today so about me, what it means Sandra, to her to live her best and bravest life. You so Sandra, tell us a little bit about yourself. All the ups and downs, um, roundabouts, well, the incredible I experiences that you've just your average show really life, that struggles through life like everybody else. And But I have a very, very positive outlook and the life. I see life as a glass half full rather than a glass half empty. So um, by everything around I you and just, just look at everything as positive as, positive as possible as possible your mind. Can. So I could tell you a, a little joke, bit about myself. I'm many things and to many different people. And I could tell you something people. really sad. I'm a woman. And then you'd be really upset. I'm a boss. That's how quickly the friend, mind can change. A CEO. So if the mind can change speaker, that quickly, and an we need to harness that power. Really, I'm we just me. Take a positive side of life. Sounds Don't good go to me. I love me that. And so tell me, right. Sandra, what does it mean to you game. to I live your best and bravest life through all the ups and downs, around abouts, the, the incredible experiences that you've Victoria. experienced but in your life, which are varied and many? You've had love, you've had lack of love, you've had trauma. wanting better for myself. I feel you're as powerful as your mind. And if you don't get... Taken down by everything me, around you and just focus on what you want in life. You're as powerful you. as your mind. Me, so I could tell you a joke and you'd laugh your tits off. And I could tell right you something really sad tumor, and then you'd be really that upset. That's that. how quickly the, the mind can change. Scary, so if the mind can change that so quickly, we need to harness that power. We need to be able to look at the positive side of life. You Don't go boo-hoo me in the corner when something doesn't go right because it's all a learning game. I didn't set out to you be good, you the, good. a successful bad, CEO of the, the biggest trauma cleaning company in Victoria, but right. it happened you know, because of determination, because of belief in myself, and because of wanting better person. for myself. You know, like I so always say, that smiling what does mean? What does it mean? Infectious. Infectious. And to be brave and to live your bravest life. Someone, living your bravest smile, life to me means living your truth, and whatever is, that so is for you. For me, let's it was transitioning to a female. Your smile does light up. Yes. Your smile right lights now, up the room, living Sandra. With brain <laughs> you. And the I from absolutely that. agree. I just wrote scary, a blog post the other day about the importance of smiling. And I did a little experiment where every single place I went, I made sure I smiled every single person I saw. in control of your own destiny by the way you think. People, the way you I act, the way you, and it really you give good, you receive this good. You do bad, you get myself. bad. I'm very much into so the karmic now that you've philosophy got of life, you know, and it's also you, helping other people and yep. just being good, a good <laughs> person. <laughs> you know, like I always As say, the smiling totally is infectious. And if we Tell look across the room the and we smile at someone, they smile, someone else sees that smile that and they start smiling. The so let's start an epidemic. Let's get the whole world made. smiling. And your smile God does light up. It, your smile lights up the room, home. Sandra. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Nothing more I nothing absolutely less. agree. Yeah, I just wrote a blog post the other day about the importance of smiling. And I did a little experiment where every single place I went, I made sure I smiled at every single person I saw. And I had the most wonderful conversations. I helped people. 
people, I felt invigorated and it really um, did like create this incredible so buzz within now, myself. Like and so now that you've got this new challenge but in front of you from that, it's with your health, yeah. you've had a few health road. issues over the years. Like one or two. <laughs> <laughs> As have I, I can totally relate. <laughs> Tell me about so tell the fear that sits with you um, in what's to come and how you're going life. to overcome that because it's another thing in the, the trauma in throughout your life you which you are going to be brave. Your greatest yeah. success. Look, I, I'm accepting it as a speed hump in the road. Was in nothing 19, more, nothing less. The only thing I'm not as happy about is the fact that I'm going to go deaf in one ear. But my hearing's not so great anyhow, so I think that... Oh, it's just another and step from there. And I'll probably have to go back. I did try hearing aids earlier on in the piece. Um, but I didn't like them. So, you can see that I've so been a bit psyched, now whether I like it or not, I'm going to have to go back like to get involved. Well, ask a busy person to do your job and it apart gets from that, it's just so another hump in the road. Wine, and I'll overcome it. With that positive attitude of yours, Sandra, I'm sure that you will. So tell us a little bit about other parts of your life. I would love for you to tell us what you think has been your greatest success. I think my greatest greatest success was and in 92, I, went down to I was asked Vic by a Western Port Drug and Alcohol Committee and, um, to um, God, raise $10,000 in 10 days. And mm-hmm. with my and position as president of the Chamber of Commerce and I was on 13 other committees and running a seven-day-a-week business, and so anyhow, I saw um, the kids so you can see that I've always been a bit psychopathic. They picked me up. <laughs> You're a busy lady. You like, like to get involved. Well, they say, ask a busy person to do a job and it gets done. Absolutely. So anyhow, we got sponsorship for wine, we got sponsorship for cheese, Dendy Theatre allowed us to put a movie on there and we got a subsidy out of that. We I had all the traders oh put Christmas prizes in and things like that and we and had the kids silent were so auctions respectful. and things to raise they money and other. we got the $10,000. because they didn't so want to break up their anyhow, group we put these created. six kids on the Armadou Pell many of them, many and of them the very first day I went down to um, Big Dock to see them off the and um, so I thought, thank you, God, I'm not going on this trip because these kids are about to kill each other and they were dysfunctional to a pretty high degree. And so anyhow, and so I saw the kids off and everything and on the last day I mean? so they picked and me I up just by a little boat the and then take me out to the ship to spend the last day with them. Like so I spent the last day with them. What a transformation it was in those 10 days. Those 10 days was just, so we need I to thought get all my Christmas had come at once and the kids were so respectful. They loved each other. They were crying because they didn't want to break up their group that they created. So and many of them, the many of them, all wanted to with um, come and be volunteers on the Almodo Palms. So sure like anyhow, well, one of the kids that those. wrote about her experience, and, uh, we'll she, and I've got a go, copy of that at home, um, she got a like cadetship with the age for her writing. On it and so that was a real bonus to me. Do you know what I mean? And I just think that the government are a little bit sloppy in not investing in things like this because it does change change kids' lives and the whole philosophy is that kids can teach kids. Kids are rebel against adults. So we need to get this more in practice and I'm sort of helping now to try and raise funds for the Elmado Pal because the ship went up to New South Wales, it got neglected and rotted out and all this. So we're restoring it here at the Docklands and I did a function with Peter Hitchin and we raised $50,000 over lunch. I'm sure we'd like to raise more but we can keep pushing pushing towards that. And we uh, we'll get the ship we're back leaving, on the go, uh, and it's for all our troubled youth you and forget. things like that. You know and grandparents and put their grandchildren on it when they see there's a problem, a or different yes, community yes, groups put their kids on it. Well. But it's all got to oh, be yeah, funded. It's, it's so good but I think the government should you know, pay a very active role, you know especially I mean? these Absolutely. days when crime is yep. prevalent. How can um, how can people find out more? And if they want to make a donation, can they go online? They. Tools uh, that yes, you use they can probably go online to the Alma Pal. Excellent. Well, we'll put that on the show notes for well, those okay. people who really would be interested in That'd contributing. Yeah, 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 because it's such a great you know cause. Like and the ship, you know, it goes out for the 10 days and comes back. But it's just dignity. the transformation and, um, is just so awe-inspiring. No you know, and if we all so had a little part in helping these kids along the way, we're doing something. We're leaving... 
a, a memory Rosa behind that you can't forget. Do you know what I mean? And you've done some good in your life. Absolutely, you're making a massive yeah. difference. Yes. Yeah. 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 And also to yourself a as well. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's so good for yourself death. to know that you've done Suicide. something. Mm, do you know what I mean? Absolutely. We yep. also do absolutely. deceased states. We also do so, and So, tell us a little bit about much the jobs that other tools that you use to, to help you overcome your fear rooms, and live your best and bravest life. Well, I don't really have um, tools. I'm just, I'm probably just a hard ass. Do, do you know what I mean? Area. Like, I'm very um, caring and compassionate justice. now. Catch we cry to the business is care, compassion, and dignity. And um, our motto is excellence is no accident. So, they're the things that strive me to keep getting bigger and better as a business. And, so and for really those that don't know, I'm actually a trauma cleaner. I have the, the biggest trauma cleaning company in Victoria. So for those our listeners out there that don't know what a trauma cleaner is, would you like to A trauma cleaner is someone that cleans up after death, suicide, and in your book, burglaries. In the book, we also do deceased estates. We also do hoarding and squalor and pretty well much the jobs that other people don't want to do. We clean up the interview rooms, the TV people, the cells and the complexities of um, we've got probably and 23 stations I think don't we do across our have area. Clean down their uh, we work for the Department of Justice. But we can't talk about jobs that we do we had one because it's, we have a privacy allow a family um, into the house, contract that we could, it's really not right to talk about other people in there. And all these most horrible times. And, and so our job really is to go in the there and restore the house back to as close to the former glory as it was so people flow. looking in there get back on with their life. And there was a and niche was in the market like, and, and I saw it and thank you God I went for it. In that area. And in your and book, anyhow, in the Trauma Cleaner book, it's fabulous how it's been written and then it has a chapter on your life and then it talks about a chapter in your trauma cleaning business. There are some incredible stories in that book. And we the, found that the wealth of people that you meet and the complexities of issues, and that some people really don't want to have a clean done, their hoarders so or squalors or whatever. But in hindsight, they look back, there, and we had one particular house, lady that wouldn't allow her family into the house. She was becoming to be really isolated. And so all these phobias really about everyone and really everything. About but she didn't quite have the skills to tell later, the maintenance she people that she'd had a sewage overflow like a and lived with it for years. And, and, and it was just like, as as and she didn't know what to do. She, she was a little bit challenged in that area. And anyhow, when finally we got to do the job, she was not a happy camper, but it was forced upon her. But then we got halfway through the property and we found out that when we Moved drawers and cupboards and, like, and things like that, or the lounge suite. It was riddled in black mold, Let them know that I'm really and so really her health was deteriorating. We process. got in there, cleaned but, up the house. Know, we had to we, call we change her the um, so people that had organised the job to be done to and condemn the house. But we know what we do so is a good thing. So she was you know, really, no one really should have to live like this. But you know, and it six months later, as as she was put into an aged care facility, like a little um, apartment of her own and everything, and, and she's as happy as a pig in shit because she thought she was dying. You know I mean? And she that now can see she's team particular about the house, how it fantastic. looks. They, she's got support systems in place. She's got her children and grandchildren back visiting her. So life has become rosy for her. And like she did say to the people that employed us, to do the job, let them know that the I'm business. really, really it grateful. I, I know I was a bitch through I the whole process, time I went to go but, and you know, we, we and helped change her life. So sometimes it takes a little bit of time to get the me. feedback, but we know oh. what we do is so a good thing, a you know, because no one like, should have you know, to live like that, you know, and it could be just as simple as not being able to explain how to get people to come and help and clean up or it's a maintenance issue. Do you know what I mean? And it takes guts and determination for your team to go in there. My team are fantastic. They... Fantastic. Most of my Making staff are from the School so of Hard Knocks people, and, it's so and they're police checked and, and working with children and checked and everything. But they've got the compassion because they've been through tough times and themselves. And it's this so makes them a valuable a key or tool to the business that makes my business yes. stand Where out. I remember one time I went to go and do a quote and the nephew had come to meet me at the door. And he said to me, he said, this is a bit different. He said, I expected a bloke in a... Overall to come. And I said, oh, well, I hope it's not a problem for you. He said, my auntie will be ecstatic. 
and we got on like a house on fire. So, you know, we had, uh, oh, I think it was about a five-day job we were there clearing out this house and she was just over the top, over the top. Fantastic, making a difference to so many other people and it's so rewarding for you and your team. It is. And we all need to look at being respectful to each other and to ourselves as well and loving of ourselves. It's so important. And you're also a big advocate for loving of yourself because now you're in this beautiful place where you might have some health conditions but you are so happy with who you are and you've come to such a long way. The book was the most cathartic thing that ever happened to me. Um, I was a bit nervous speaker, when it first came out because of the back page and what it said. And I just love you know, it. It's, it's given me a chance to be married, myself at had this children. Do you know what I mean? I'm um, sort of thinking, prostitute. Absolutely. You know? Because I can't be a in the handbag for my husband anymore. Um, all these sort of things. And I thought, oh, my deeply. God, no. You know, so I can't it's have given me said. a whole new Anyhow, perspective I thought about on life. And it's been very provocative. It's going to be out there and sell on hotcakes. And it is. It's the sixth most read book in Australia. So. I'm quite God, happy with that. If there's a possible movie marble. deal going on in but America or touring talks about. Agenda, the book is still on the shelves at airports and things like that. So and that's I feel like quite content and quite happy. Two years later. Yes, I have do you know what I mean? So we're issues. having a resurgence again of the book. Do you know what I mean? I have health issues. It's given me a new life of being a public speaker and getting out there talking to people. And I just love it. It's given me a chance to reinvent myself at this age. Do you know what I mean? I'm sort of thinking, you beauty. You know, Absolutely. Because I can't be in the houses issues, with all the pathogens anymore doing anything that I because it affects my lungs too deeply, you know. So it's, it's given me a whole new you? perspective you know that, on life you know, and it's been very cathartic to have gone through the experience so where I'd always early, work to you know, 150%. Park and park and if someone was going to have a go at me, it would never be about my work. Me, thank God. But if they had and a go so, at me you know, because you, it was my gender, I'd say, you've got a problem, you not plan me. Your life a so bit I feel more. quite content so and quite happy. Yes, I have health issues, but saying, Mr. and Mrs. Mrs. Everybody have health issues. Do you know what I mean? I have health issues. I'm not special. No one's special. We're all just dealing with our own things because there's lessons to learn from it all. Absolutely. 100% so with that as a type 1 diabetic living with an insulin pump. I have my you, own fair share of health issues, but it never stops it. me from doing anything that I ever want to do and I just keep moving forward in the best go, way that I possibly can. You start to pre-plan, don't you? You, really you, you know that you can do you know, you can I can walk about 60 metres and I get a bit fatigued, so I get somewhere early. And I think that's your trick to buy the bullshit. And the good fairies of parking always look after me, thank God. And so, you know, you learn to do things differently. You plan and your life that's a little bit more so that, that it's more you successful be, for you. See, and there's an old brands saying, brands you plan to succeed or you don't plan to <laughs> <any laughs> fail. <laughs> like, I yes, that's it. very I true. I've got and to nice be house, reinventing nice your life in I your uh, twilight years, you know I mean? senior years, um, it's so inspirational to our older listeners out there that you it doesn't matter how old you are, you can do for it. Just take a five of the horns and just go, I can do and do this. And if you really believe in yourself, you can do it. You can achieve anything. Like I say, you're as powerful as your mind. And I think that's your tip. Just don't by the bullshit. Just be focused on what you want. Yes, and go for it. Reach for the stars. Definitely your fabulous tip of living your best and bravest life. Because you have to be brave to do that. You have to be. But see, I don't see it as brave. I see it. Dog determined. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like I deserve it. I aspire. I've got a nice house, a nice car, everything, but I want better than that. Do you know what I mean? And I know materialistic things aren't that important, but they are when you're on your own and you want to achieve. I want the best that life can offer me this time around. Who knows what's going to happen in my next life? You know, but this time around I'm going for gold. You're definitely making the most of it and I love your positive attitude. Thank you. So thank you, Sandra, for coming in. Oh, it's been my pleasure. Thank you, Tiffany. And be kind to yourself and be kind to others. And remember, smile. It goes for miles. That's a great tip. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you. How amazing is Sandra? I absolutely loved doing this interview. And if I'm a little bit honest with you, I was so nervous when she first came in. I was so excited to be doing the interview. So I hope that you got a lot out of today's episode. She is an inspiration and a shining light and her smile really does light up the room. So do remember what she said, just to smile and make someone's day today. 
You just never know what a smile could bring to your day. So be brave and smile to those around you. So if you've enjoyed this conversation, subscribe to the When We Are Brave podcast. I would love it if you could leave a review. Reviews help shows get the word out. So please tell your friends and family about When We Are Brave so they too can grab some inspiration and tips and tricks on living their best and bravest life. You can find out more about me on my website, tiffanyjohnson.com.au. My book, Brave Enough Now, an inspirational story of self-discovery, survival and hope is my story of how I came to find who I truly was and how I came to survive the 1999 Swiss Canyoning disaster. It's available now on Amazon and soon to come out as an audiobook. I'm so excited. And don't forget to download your free mini guided journal. It just might be the thing that helps you to live your best and bravest life. You can head over to my website, tiffanyjohnson.com.au and download your free copy today. You'll also find a whole bunch of tips and tricks on my blog post on how you can live your best and bravest life. I also love to share my story with audiences across the globe talking about resilience and how you can live your best and bravest life, including how I survived the 1999 Swiss canyoning disaster. You can connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter or LinkedIn or send me an email. I'd love to connect with you. So head over to my website, tiffanyjohnson.com.au. So my friends, be brave. Until next time and live your best and bravest life.